Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here every week about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And spring is here. Had this beautiful weather front that came through. The wildflowers are going to go crazy. So you've had, uh, if you were planting wildflowers, uh, and I'd mentioned that January, February, March, that's the time when you put wildflowers in. If you do them immediately, the next oh, couple weeks, you'd have a shot at having wildflowers this year as far as by seed. Of course, we sell wildflowers. The starts, they're in full bloom already. So California poppies, one of the most famous of all of the wildflowers. In fact, entire hills will be covered in this beautiful orange flower. You can I've got a straight mix of just California poppy. We call it the poppy magic mix. Uh, it's got orange, red, white, apple blossom. It's got lots of different colors of poppies in this one mix. You want to put that out so that the seed have time to freeze and thaw. I'm sure we'll have one last frost before May. We just always do, typically. There's nothing in the forecast, but poppies need to have that freeze and thaw cycle to crack open that hull. That's why it's so important to put those in earlier while there's still cold going on. Uh, and then you pray for rain, which we had this week. It's going to make everything germinate just like that. If you're late to the party and we don't have, if I were to, if you come in and, and I help you with wildflowers, what I would suggest now is before you throw them in, on, on the ground, I would throw them in the freezer for a couple days and then bring them back out. I let them thaw for a couple days. Then I put them back in for a couple days. I would artificially put them through this scarifying freeze, thaw, crack open the hulls. I would do that for a couple times, and then I would put them out in the yard. It seems counterintuitive, but what you're doing is, is what gardeners do. We, we help plants do better than they could be, do by themselves. And so this is a real quick gardener technique that really ups your game as far as germination rate, uh, how to get them to really go. Any, not just the poppy mix. We sell, we custom make four different types of wildflowers. It'd be a good time to do it, but because I don't know, there's nothing on the for, in the in the forecast for freezing uh, at this point. Hopefully, we don't. I Man, I would love to have the fruit trees are in full bloom right now. It'd be great to have huge apple crops, peaches, apricots, nectarines, plums, pears, cherries. They're all they're all going to be in bloom in the next really week or so. So it's such a good time to put fruit trees in. But then you don't want frost to happen while they're in bloom or they've set fruit. So when the fruits are real small, they're sensitive to freezing temperatures. That's why we cover the trees sometimes. That's why we'll put a, a shop light in the middle of the tree. You think your neighbors are crazy, but no, those are gardeners. Gardeners have a bit of crazy in them. So they're just putting a, a heat source in the middle of that tree so that if we do get frost, it takes the edge off. You'll see some folks put Christmas trees light, lights. Any heat source, any amount of heat will keep that, will make that the way the convection happens through that tree. It just helps the tree have air movement going through so frost doesn't come in light on those, on those flowers, on that fruit. It's an easy trick. Another one, if you happen to see that, just while I'm on that same topic, good time to put fruit trees. If they're in bloom, don't worry. There's ways to get out of this, lighting, covering. Another trick is just water. If you hydrate plants when it's getting cold, it takes that edge off. It'll get you down a good two, three degrees. It'll get you down to just simply watering your plants. Water the ground underneath that tree, uh, under those berry bushes, underneath that grape. It will 
take the edge off. It'll get you down to 28 degrees easy without getting damaged or very minimal damage. Then if you cover that in addition, that'll take you down to mid 20s. And we're not going to see colder than that at this point. It's just getting nicer and nicer. The days are getting longer and longer. And so it's just kind of where you're at. That's why for wildflowers, going back to where we started, it's a good time to put wildflower seed down. But I would, I would artificially put it through this freeze-thaw cycle simply with your freezer. Throw it in there for a couple days. It's not going to damage the seed. It doesn't do anything to them. It actually increases the germination rate. And then bring them back out. And then a couple days later, put it back in and then go plant them. So that really will up the, the germination rate on those seed. Of course, if you miss it all together or you just don't want you know, 200 feet of wildflowers, so you just want a little patch, a little container, we'll just put one... We've got just poppies already in bloom. Just put a plant in. You're good to go. There you are. It'll, it'll force new seeds coming out. Another one I really like, one of my favorite white perennials that are wild. They just grow wild out, out in nature. It's called candy tuft. Candy tuft is your parents. It's just this white. It's not even knee high. It's, it's, it's ankle high mounding perennial, uh, perennial flower covered in white flowers they always bloom really early in spring and so they'll bloom for a couple of months and then it's just this really pretty evergreen perennial it really does great here animals don't seem to eat it because it's growing out in the wild that plant has trained the rabbits and the deer and things to not eat it it just has a sap that they really don't they don't like the taste so it's a good one poppies animals don't seem to bother poppies herbs they don't bother rosemary, lavender, uh, oregano, thyme. They just don't like the taste of this herbally scent. So if you've got some mammal problems out in the yard, whether it's a chipmunk or a, 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 a rabbit or a squirrel or, or full-on deer and elk, I know some of you up in that those higher elevations, you've got elk starting to show up. Well, then it, they don't bother those. And so you can have beautiful gardens and be in that wildland forest interface. You just got to be really selective on what you're putting out there. The rest of us, I live in the middle of you know, Eagle Ridge, here in the middle of town, up by the high school, up in the Prescott Heights area. And so you Prescott Lakes, that area. And so there, we don't have a lot of, there's been so much building, the deer have kind of pushed off. We have lots of pack rats and we have we have javelina. That's our main nemesis. And so they've hit my gardens once this spring already. So I'm starting to go, okay, what can I plant? The javelina won't take snapdragons and dusty millers and uh, California poppies. There's quite a few things. In the backyard, we got it fenced. And so the animals can't get in there, at least javelina. Deer near out. Uh, rabbits sometimes come underneath the fence, but the dogs... The fence is there for the dogs more than the, the gardens. I, my my ne nemesis back there are the voles, this little field mouse. He's got a real long nose and pack rats. Oh, my gosh. So for me, I've got a trap, a trap line. I've got more than one. I've got a whole line of them where I just keep them, keep them at bay. They get in the hot tub. They eat a hole in the hot tub and in the insulation. They, they build nests down underneath that built-in grill. They're just not welcome. They eat the cushions. These, you get this beautiful furniture, and the cushions are what cost so much. Not the furniture. It's the, fur, it's the, it's the pads. Well, rats like to get in there and eat them. That's, that's, that's intolerable. That's not going to happen at the Lane Casa. No way. So I, I have traps out that keep them at bay. Out in the front yard, I've got some bait stations so i've used some zinc based baits that keeps them out and i've got old containers that hold them and they've got bait stations that kind of you put the bait in keeps the dogs out keeps things that keeps the grandkids out so i've got this line of defense that keeps them out of my gardens because they do nothing but to get in the garage and wreak havoc one that'll watch so it's warming up this week one i should put on your your list to to not freak out and so some of you are new to the area and you've never seen a snake before. I mean, I've, snakes are good. They're good for the gardens. They keep the rats and the mice at bay. And so they're going to be migrating starting probably this week. So they're coming out of their winter nests. 
So as soon as the temperature gets warm enough, the ground, it's really soil temperature, they start coming up and they slowly, they can move miles, miles and miles. And so uh, gopher snakes, big, long snake, they can get up to six, eight feet long. They are the best snake you've ever had in the gardens. They eat rattlesnakes, gophers, rats. Uh, just don't freak out. Let them rest. They'll move on. Just kind of let them rest there for a minute and they'll kind of move on. We got a lot in store for you. Lisa Waters Lane's coming into the studio right after this with your garden questions. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Go native with Waters' locally grown selection of overachievers. Waters' hand-selected native plants and cactus are famous for continual blooms, natural beauty, and low care. You can do this. A stunning backyard with less water and even less work. And Waters can help. Go native with Waters' selection of overachieving native plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters' native plants in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, columbine, purple plum, and our Prescott poppies. These silk beauties look delicate, but really one of the toughest bloomers in the gardens. These wildflowers come in vivid colors of orange, red, pink, and white that are ideal for the hard-to-grow areas in your yard. You're going to love your backyard again. Prescott poppies can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener, green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. Oops, I forgot all my, I got my apron, I got my pins. I should look better than this for radio. (laughs) (laughs) Lisa comes with your garden questions. So Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we start, we forget. We don't even know where we're going yet. So, but but the microphone says we're going. So here oh, well, we go. That's good. Hopefully, yeah. both are going. Okay. Q and A. Q and A. What Q&A. are people are asking about? Yes. Garden Center has been busy. We yes. should tell folks. So there's this rumor that business is really hard, and that uh, you want to you, you, like it's hard to get employees. It's hard to oh. make. But I got to tell you, if you treat people well, you, you pay you pay fair market, and it's a fun place to work. We've had no problems getting no. staff that are really crazy smart. Like mm-hmm. we just upped our game. We're better than ever. Our crew was good, but more people. I got to be careful. I could just do nothing yeah. but go down. Yeah, just in the big old foot. In your we mouth. had a record march. <laughs> record, like, I mean, this is the third year in a row, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm encouraged from a business yeah. standpoint. From gardening, gardening is popular again. It's so nice, exciting. isn't it? It they're is. Not traveling, so they're they're not, we were always competing with cruise ships, <laughs> yeah. not Walmart or Amazon. Right. We're competing with cruise ships that so we waters garden, independent garden centers. Mm-hmm. And so people are starting to travel again, but they're gardening. They found out the therapeutic. It the just benefits. felt better about gardening. Sure, sure. Plus lots of new people in town that Plus need new landscapes. <laughs> the garden class was like everyone was new. So, mm-hmm. okay, let's see how many people this is your first season. Everyone except for like five. So yeah. it's kind of exciting to see lots of nice. new faces. Yeah. So anyway. So questions. Okay. First one is from Mallory. She's in Prescott. She Mallory. wants to know, does she need or have to, or are you supposed to prune back salvia gregii's autumn sage yeah. and Russian sage, or Good do you question. just leave them? Yeah. So Mallory, what I would do, and this is for any of us, we, we grow Russian sage, which is this big blue spiky uh, shrub mm-hmm. gets up, I don't know, hip high or so. And then uh, salvia gregiae or autumn sage is a step down from that. It's mm-hmm. just above knee high or so. And so we pruned ours back because we want them to be shapely, to mm-hmm. be formal, to be pretty. Mm-hmm. They can get kind of a wild mangy, I'm running across a yard look without it. And so I would say it's, they, they perform better if you prune them back and then fertilize them. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me, what did we do? So we, we actually, um, I cut the Russian sage, which is up about hip high down to about knee high. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It really cut them back. And then any mm -hmm. runners, suckers, they have kind of a rhizome that kind of runs underground. I ripped those out of the ground. So you're not running. You stay in your bounds. You're staying right here. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And so now we've got this nice vase-shaped knee-high Russian sage. Mm -hmm. Hasn't leafed out yet. Just starting to leaf buds, but it's not quite leafing this next week with how warm it is. It'll be, it'll just start growing. The salvia or autumn sage, that we took down about half. So it's down below knee high. Maybe it's a foot off the ground. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It certainly wants to run. Just gonna rip those out. And then it wants to grow sideways many times. It just took the hedgers and kind of forced them to grow up and happy like, mm -hmm. not laying down and going, oh, I'm just going to crawl over the yard here. <laughs> I want her to be perky and sparky and and and, like and the you. hummingbirds, kind of like me. Yeah, that's kind of what you're attracted to me about. Heck, yeah, that's true. Perky. I'm the perky man. Perky man. That sounds bad on the airwaves. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's how you do it. Fertilize them with the all-purpose plant food, that 744 mm -hmm. uh, granular food that's got cottonseed meal, which makes them bloom. Then it's got some bird guano in it, which makes them leaf out like right now. If you were to sprinkle that on there by... Well, by May 1, they'll be in full glorious bloom mm -hmm. and they won't stop until, uh, I don't know, Fall. after Halloween. Yeah, okay. they go into November. November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's how definitely. you do it, Mallory. Hopefully okay. that helps. Come so, in and take a picture. We could show you more. If that helps you more, if that didn't quite, the words didn't, <laughs> sometimes I don't describe <laughs> where the airwaves like I want to. Come take a picture. We can show you. So, how. Mallory, the short answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Prune yeah. back your sage. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Next one is from Jay. He wants to know what is the best way to handle aphids? They're out there on ornamental kale and yeah. broccoli starts. So we had, we had, I was in the backyard with our containers. We've mm -hmm. got aphids back there. I'm going, what is wrong? There was one that was collapsing. Go, what the heck is going on? You take a close yeah. look. Aphids are covered over this mm -hmm. thing. So aphids deserve to die. You should kill them. What the book, which we, if you Google it, they go, oh, just stream it with a strong stream of water. They'll go right. away. That's not true. They'll come right back within the next, that afternoon and be right back at you. Spray, if you're going to spray something, spray a death spray, not just a strong stream of water. And what I did, I used triple action. Yeah. There's an organic neem oil. You Organic gardeners, N-E-E-M, neem, is what's in triple action. Mm -hmm. Spray that, kind of spritz it especially for things like broccoli, mm -hmm. it's edible. So your edibles, you want to use organics. You want to use organics no matter what, whenever you can. But aphids are easy to take out, just spritz it, and they'll be gone just like that. You might follow up in like 10, 7, 10 days, do it again, because aphids come at you so heavy that it's hard to kill them all. So you mm -hmm. come right back and again, that, that, that triple axe will kill off the eggs and the aphids, and a couple spritz should should do you way to go. You can spray that up to the day of harvest. Right. The thing I've noticed with the triple action, what I recommend people do is once you spray it, wait three to four days or so, you kind of hose the plant down because yeah. the way triple action works, the the carcasses, the bodies, yeah. <laughs> they just kind of sit there frozen yeah. on the leaves. Yeah. So if you hose it down, uh, then you can kind of keep an eye on it and see if you need to respray. Great advice. Yeah, totally great advice. That's good. Yeah, uh, aphids, just a... Uh, for trivia, they're the only insect that gives live birth. Yes. So they can go from one insect to like they're continue, they just walk down the, the stem giving live birth. So they, they quickly multiply and they lay eggs and they're winged. So and they're asexual. Oh, really? Uh -huh. oh, what does that mean? It means they don't need a buddy. They just do it on their. <laughs> Uh, what, a, what a way to be. <laughs> okay. It only takes one. <laughs> it only takes one. And then you have hundreds. All right. Next question is from Alex. He has a three-year-old Deodor Cedar. Uh, it's doing well, but it seems like the colors kind of faded yeah. out of it. He has fed it. Okay. Uh, but he wants to know, is there something else he should be adding to that? So what you can do, so for your evergreens, this goes for spruce, pine, cypress, cedars, all your conifers, the evergreens. If they're off color a little bit, Give them the all-purpose plant food, that 744. I would probably do it again for this one because Deodor cedars, these are very heavy feeders. They're the mm -hmm. fastest growing of all the evergreens. So they'll grow two, three feet a year. So they quickly scream. They can actually grow out. They can use all the 
nutrients up because they're growing so fast and they're left starving. Mm -hmm. Feed it again. It's hard to overdo it with a deer or a cedar. But in addition, going back to your question, uh, this is especially important for uh, Arizona cypress. These mm -hmm. really blue, bl the silver blue colors. Colorado spruce, Fed Albert spruce, back rye spruce. They bring out this, this bright blue color. In addition to the all-purpose, so also give it aluminum sulfate. Mm -hmm. It's like the magic, it's like fairy dust. You put it on there, it, it lowers the pH. It's very acidic, so it makes the soil acidic. Evergreens love that. But the aluminum, it will pick that up and it makes it very green. Mm -hmm. It'll actually put on a, a brighter blue. It'll almost glow at night. It just is that <laughs> bright. Maybe that's a bit extreme, but <laughs> sort of. If, you're, if your plants have gone off a little bit, aluminum sulfate for those evergreens like deodor cedars, um, spruce, spruce, pine, firs. If you want more uh, uh, junipers that want to bring out that, that silver mm -hmm. color, that uh, two, twofold aluminum sulfate, it looks salt and peppered when you're done and give it a handful or two of the aluminum sulfate. That thing will look like a million bucks here within three, four weeks. So just go, whoa, oh my gosh. With that, we're out of time. Yep. Nice hanging with you, babe. You too. We'll be back in a little bit. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, right after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Columbine, and our Purple Twist Plum. This Arizona plum is the ideal purple tree between evergreens. Blooms in a profusion of pink flowers that precede the deep purple foliage. Large enough to use as a front yard tree and behaved enough to use as a street tree. Plant pears flanking gateways, driveways, or an orchard-like rows to screen neighbors. Purple Twist Plum can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. There's nothing like tomatoes picked fresh from your garden. Waters Mountain Tomato Collection are varieties proven to produce and thrive. Heirlooms, beefsteaks, cherries, naturally grown for local success. Completely organic, never genetically altered, and utterly delicious. They're ready for your garden now. You can grow your own this spring, and we can help. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. There's a pink tree that's been in bloom for, oh, two, three weeks, almost a month. It's starting to leaf out now. It's called a purple leaf plum. It's been pink. It's up about 20 feet tall, maybe a little shorter than that. It's a very drought hardy plant. Animals seem to leave it alone. So deer and, and don't seem to rub their antlers on it like they would a, a, a cottonwood or an aspen. They just That's just easy to care for. That's been in pink. Uh, the white one right now is, it opened up last week. It's called a ornamental flowering pear. There's several varieties. Bradford pear is probably the one your grandparents grew. There's some newer varieties like Aristocrat, Capital Pear. These are all ornamental, just pretty flowers. They have the pear-shaped leaf, which is a real glossy green leaf to it. Very good shade tree. And then it's the last tree to turn red in the fall. It has a lot going on for it, but it doesn't produce fruit. So the fruiting pears have not bloomed yet. They generally will have those bloom a little later. So we've programmed them to come out later in April. So they're out of the risk of frost. But the ornamentals, they bloom early, right after the purple leaf plums. There's another one that opened up two days ago. That's uh, There's a real bright red, just really rich, deep red, really magenta pinks, just really bright colors. Those are crab apples. They're blooming all around the, the region uh, at, at all elevations from Sedona and Cottonwood, Camp Verde to... Kirkland Hillside, all the way up to Groom Creek and Prescott, Prescott Valley, Dewey, all, and everything in between. This central highlands area, we're all sort of the same. And all of these plants have been in bloom and, and grow very well here. So they're good landscape plants for this area. So the crab apples, 
they come in more diversity. So pear, they're only white. Purple leaf plum, just pink. Crab apples come from the brightest bridal white to apple blossom colors, to bright pinks, to reds, to purples even. And so they're all starting to crack open color or in full bloom here at the garden center. They're just looking really good. Good time to plant those. You can see what they're like. There's a, a new one out called Prairie Fire Crab Apple. It's a dwarf. So crab apples grow up to about 25 feet. Kind of a good intermediate kind of size. Kind of a, an umbrella shape to them typically. The Prairie Fire has a bright, rich, deep pink to it. But it only gets up to 12, 14 feet. It's pint size, short. They don't form crab apples like your parents, your grandparents had. They, they, my grandparents always had crab apple jellies. They'd go out and pick these little miniature apples and they'd make preserves out of them. Really good. Actually, my mouth just watered thinking about it. Oh, that, that childhood is so great. Crab apples, ornamental ones, they can put on a dime size fruit or smaller. Uh, and typically the birds will eat them before they actually drop. Or do, they're not messy at all. They're just pretty bright orange colors, typically in fall. Great shade tree in the summer. Bright, intense colors, flowers in the spring. There's another one that's just starting to go. I was out in Prescott Valley yesterday. And uh, there, the, the red buds are starting to bloom. They're the kind of the, the fourth in the wave of color that starts to come. It kind of crescendos in, in about Mother's Day with the purple robe locust. It's this big tree, 35, 40 feet tall, big shade tree with these wisteria, purple wisteria to, to light pink colored flowers that dangle down. There's just this wave of different trees that bloom and kind of announce spring. It's a, it's a progression. And so when they're done blooming, they'll typically start leafing. And so they can have many colors of the foliage. So, so the golden locust has golden new growth, that's the name. And then it matures to a, to a green kind of big, it's a big shade tree, 40 feet tall, th th minimum 30 to 40 feet tall. So it's not the size of a cottonwood or a sycamore. These are 70, 80 foot tall. These are monsters, too big for a lot of yards. But a, a golden locust, a purple robe locust, remember that had that blue flower that dangles down. You folks out in the valley areas, Paul and Chino Valley, you're famous for your locust trees. They, they got smaller leaves. They don't get beat up by the wind as easy. They're just pretty consistent, low water, low care kind of trees. Right now, the red buds, that's another native. That's, there's a wild variety called a Mexican or Western red bud. It's short, yeah, maybe maybe 10 feet tall, kind of typically a big shrub. Uh, maybe, maybe it could get a little bit taller than that if it's really old. But the most famous is the Eastern red bud. They're cousins. It's the tree form of that native one that grows here. They adapt really well to our areas. If you're thinking smaller, even the smallest backyards, you could have a red bud, a crab apple, a, any of these that we've mentioned, any of these blooming trees you see right now, they'll grow in your backyard very easily. They're typically low maintenance. They'll take clay soil or alkaline water, the bright wind. It just takes all of our environment and they adapt and thrive for decades to come. So pick your favorite color and then pick what size do I want? And that's where we can help you. I want to shade my back patio. I want to shade the west side of my wall. I want an accent tree out in my front yard. We can help guide you into the right size of tree. And then you can pick the color. I would say start with the color. And then we'll get you the right size. So that's important. Trees are where you really want to focus your energy, time, and landscape dollars on. Because a pretty tree stays prettier and gets more beautiful. An ugly tree just gets uglier with age. So pick the right ones. You want to handpick those for your yard. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. 
I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandma would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Pink Perfume Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. New pink blooms fill the landscape with fragrance of grandma over and over again in the garden. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, all for under $25. Lilacs like grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Okay, we're back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. It's kind of fun to look at yourself in the camera. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't not know. so fun. It's, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> anyway, we're we're uh, we're here live in the studio, and we're recording. We're we have this with a vlog. We're t- taking the video piece, and we're broadcast over seven different terrestrial airwaves, different terrestrial. radio signals. Yeah, you got to go. You have terrestrial airwaves. Ter- <laughs> Air- <laughs> towers. <laughs> it's broadcast over several radio stations oh, okay. and the po- and the internet. Just so checking. there we go. I don't know anymore. No one listens to any one thing. That is true. Consistently. You ask customers, where'd you hear about us? From everywhere. They're from the, their favorite YouTube, their the newspaper, the digital site, their our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I mean, they're from everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's fun. It from a creative artist standpoint, super fun to create content and spread it out over the internet everywhere. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> the cloud, the cloud, <laughs> the Ethernet, the <clears throat> whatever Ethernet. it is called today, <laughs> I think it's Internet 3.0 now. Oh. You know, we, we brought those strawberries in before we start. So this is all yes. your segment. But Michelle said, Ken, you have to talk about these new strawberries. We should show them off for the video folks and then describe yes. them for the audio folks. It's <clears throat> it's a funky new bushel and berry strawberry. So this one's called Rosy Bell. So you can see the real pretty uh, light pink blossom on there. So most strawberry, it's a strawberry. Yeah. Most of your strawberries, the old fashioned have white. It's basically white blossoms. You mean boring. Well, no. But these are exciting new edible strawberries. So that's Rosy Bell. And it's actually an ever bearing. So that means that it is going to produce fruit summer through fall. Yeah. So it's just kind of a continual type. I so. did actually try some of these on the <clears throat> table. They're all organic. Yeah. Uh, they're they're delicious. They're they? really sweet. Yeah. Ooh, they're really good. My okay. mouth is watered thinking about them. So that one's Rosy Bell. This is, uh, see if we can get a good color of the blooms. That one's Scarlet Bell. There you go. Much That's darker. It. There it is. Dark red. Absolutely beautiful. Bright red. I mean, yeah. just like fire engine, only deeper mm-hmm. red. Those would be... Fire engine with the lights on, red. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking they'd be really pretty in a pot. If you had a large pot, Yeah. Uh, maybe you got a little shrub or something in the middle, but the strawberries would be really pretty along the edge and just because they kind of drape down do. and fill in. So, And those colors are so dynamic and they would just keep blooming all season long. You know, I, I tell folks, too, I need a ground cover. Mm, uh, and so I, I, we don't think about edibles so many times. Right. They're, they're a great ground cover. Oregano, oh, yeah. great ground cover. Oregano, uh, We always thyme. think junipers and cotoneasters, but mm-hmm. strawberries and thyme and oregano, Mint. they're great. Yeah. All of those so would we, do really well. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, think outside the box when you're thinking ground covers. Sometimes. Think outside the, the pot. <laughs> Like, well, I can't uh-huh. say pot or the airwaves anymore. Uh, you'll get, Flat, yeah. The Facebook will tag you going, you can't talk about pot. <laughs> Containers. Think outside the container. There you go. But yeah, so there's, when speaking of herbs and, yeah. and vegetables, we have a super selection of herbs in right now. So thyme, mints, yeah. uh, oreganos. What else is out there? Uh, cilantro, parsley. There's basil. I mean, they're everyone. Rosemary, there's... lavenders. We've looked at it. So this is an area where we as an independent we can grow our own herbs. They're organic. We, we They're so specialized. Mm-hmm. And you don't sell a ton of them. And so a box store, they're not interested in that. They want the, the best movers. Right. They want that's basil. That's it. You're going to go to Trader Joe's basil. That's all you get. Mm-hmm. Maybe a rosemary. We can get really diverse 
and, and we've got the expertise mm -hmm. to grow them and then tell you how to use them. And so we've just said this is a this is a niche that we can we can dominate and yeah. have fun with. Mm -hmm. It's not just some boring, okay, you can only sell a thousand basils a year, and you're going, okay, another one. <laughs> but when you're getting into fennel and 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 yeah. different onions, mm -hmm. it's fun strawberries. Mm -hmm. It's fun at this point. We're plant nerds. So we want to have we want new, fun, different things. So we, we tend to attract plant nerds <laughs> that like to shop here because yeah. we're plant nerds. Right, right. <laughs> and er all the herbs really do so well yeah. here. We're like the perfect climate for yeah. herbs. It's, it's the elevation, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. It's the bright sun. They like that. It's the dryness. Mm -hmm. They don't, they like that. <clears throat> and then they're just, they, they'll take our alkaline soil, our water, right. like the clay. They do, they do great, better than anywhere else in the country. I yeah, think I would agree. Well, I'm glad we're finally in agreement <laughs> after 35 years of marriage. We're finally agreeing. We agree on something. Yeah, I'd marry you again. Herbs. <laughs> Even just for your herbs, if nothing else. Okay. Well, okay. anyway, good to we know. Digress. So, yes, lots of uh, veggies in right now. We've gotten, we've got a lot of still the cool season veggies. So, and you still have time to put in your lettuce and oh, kale yeah, and still get um, good crops off of it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, but we're starting to get in some of those warm seasons. Yeah. So tomatoes, peppers, uh, the trick being, if you get them gay, get them, but you can't just throw them out there and ignore them. They're why? Well, because we are going to get some more cold. Well, you're nights. talking to groom Creek, but <laughs> or Highland pines, but, uh, Dewey probably isn't cottonwood. Mm -hmm. Isn't they're coming over for their True. Costco run and, we see them, Kingman will come down to the VA mm -hmm. and they'll stop by. So it depends on what the elevation that you're at. So sure. we're catering to a lot of different elevations. Yeah. But yeah, they don't like to go below 40 degrees. Let's say a okay. tomato or basil mm -hmm. or cucumbers, peppers. We've got all those. We can just make sure you got a sheet or something. Right. Or I, I like it just helped a couple before we started the, the show. I've got a, I've got a rolling basically right. tub oh, they good. just roll into the garage uh -huh. and they bring it out in the day and they're all oh, totally cheating so yeah, they bring it out in the sun and going well right. have at it you're yeah. golden for that we have a neighbor that has she's got a huge rolling rack yeah and she rolls it in and out, you know, but she loves doing that. That's yeah. her thing. I'm, so yes you can certainly get your tomatoes and peppers and all that things now but, but some some yeah. of them too um so, so our so how do you explain this to newcomers? <laughs> I don't know. So the nights are really cool, right? And so you do want to get a jump start with a mm -hmm. few of your summer plants, even though we might see some a cold snap. Just be ready. Mm -hmm. But if you wait until Mother's Day or in Memorial Day, we cool down so much that they don't they don't grow as fast as they do, let's say in mm -hmm. Minnesota. Right. Once you get past Memorial Day, you put them in. They grow like crazy 24 seven all the time, day and night here. They don't do that. Yeah. They only grow during the day mm -hmm. and it cools down at night. Yeah. And so we're notorious for coming into uh, that first frost in October. And you've got, you haven't harvested one tomato and you're bringing this entire plant. You're cutting the plant off hanging it upside down in your garage to ripen them up on the vine. You haven't, it's just, it's, if you can get a few in the ground early, sure. It's going to help you. Plus, there's that bragging right with mm -hmm. with gardeners. You know, you know what we do have, which what? would help customers immensely, is the wall of waters. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's like a little, oh yeah, mini greenhouse kind of thing yeah. almost that goes around the plant. Uh, you, it's got little tubes, little sections that you fill with water that heat up during the day, yeah. which we get those nice warm days. And then it's going to throw off that heat at night. So yeah. it's just going to protect that plant. So that's a super easy way if you want to get a jump if start. If you don't have a greenhouse, this is the way to have a greenhouse around each and every plant. Mm -hmm. Literally, we've had those around our plant. We start, start mm -hmm. with our wall of water plant protectors. Come in and see us. We can we can show you how to, how to use them. Mm -hmm. You buy them once, they're good for 10 years. They yeah, last, last a, long, a long, time. long time. Uh, but literally, we've had tomatoes growing out of the top of those. They stand about three feet tall and it snowed <laughs> and it didn't affect them. It was great. It, it was awesome. So this is a true heat. test. Yeah. It throws off that heat. Yeah. The most important thing is it warms the soil up. Mm -hmm. So the plant starts growing actively faster into the season. So you get a right. bigger plant faster into, it's like a greenhouse right. around each and individual plant. Mm -hmm. Plant protectors are 
a great way to start. It's cheating. It's literally cheating in gardening. Right. You kind of start that way rather than just chuck them out in the ground. But it's okay to cheat in gardening. You know what? But not cards. I, I think it's good to have an advantage. But cheating's not good to say over the airwaves. <laughs> that's, that's it's never fair to cheat, but have an advantage. You can cheat with over your, your fellow gardener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, anything, any last thing? You well, so you know, we didn't cover anything that I was going <laughs> to talk about. So okay. maybe that'll have to wait till next week. But I was going to talk about crab apples, which are blooming oh, around yeah. town and are yeah. spectacular. So, so next week. I kind of, I'll mention them here the next, I mentioned them somewhat. Oh, okay. so, so we touched on them. I would have gone, I would love, next week we'll go into the depth of mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Just kind of go after it. So okay. Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners, be back right after Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are lilac, poppy, purple plums, and our songbird columbine. This graceful beauty dances in the shade of the garden, holding its head high, smiling back at you. This bloomer comes back each spring with lacy green foliage, promptly followed by amazing two-tone flowers. An excellent cut flower that is both deer and rabbit resistant. So hardy, some varieties naturally call Arizona home. Songbird Columbine can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Go native with Waters' locally grown selection of overachievers. Waters' hand-selected native plants and cactus are famous for continual blooms, natural beauty, and low care. You can do this. A stunning backyard with less water and even less work. And Waters can help. Go native with Waters' selection of overachieving native plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters' native plants in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we are back with the mountain gardener, Ken Lane, your host. And the beauty of having a studio right here at the garden center is when someone really smart shows up at your garden center. Go, hey, Steve, that's super interesting. We should share that with listeners. And Steve is with Bailey Nursery, Steve Carlson. He's the sales rep for Bailey Nursery. This is one of the premier tree and shrub grower in the country. Very new products coming out, but I really appreciate your fruit trees. You are coming out with these multi-trunked, multi-variety cocktail kind of trees. You were explaining it so casually across the street to the staff that Steve, you you should share that with listeners. They they want to know that kind of stuff. So welcome right. to the studio, Steve. Well, thanks, Ken. Yeah, it's good to be here. Hey, you bet. Right. So, how did you tell us first about yourself? How long you've been in the industry? How did you get into this? How How'd you become such a smart tree guy? Well, started at uh, Michigan State at the horticulture department and graduated there, moved to Colorado and started my career in garden centers, moved on to a grower position at a local wholesale grower, been there for, went, oh, I was 16 years there and then I moved on to a national company um, who currently is Bailey Nurseries. Uh, national con- uh, company has three large locations throughout the com- country uh, Oregon, Minnesota, and Illinois. Okay. And we supply the entire country uh, along with Canada and do shipping into Europe. Yeah. Well, I didn't know Europe. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know Bailey's was that big. Oh, yeah. They're... I know in the western half of the U.S., yeah. it's a big deal. Bailey Nursery, mm-hmm. as far as premier growers of the better plants. Right. Your name is at the top. Yeah. So and we've we've worked hard to get ourselves there, and we we work hard to maintain that. Now explain to, to listeners what so fruit trees. What what should they be looking at at fruit trees, and why should they get a, a triple play, let's say, or or your braided or grafted types of trees? What are the benefits, and, well, and how'd you come up with that? Well, as uh, people wanted to put more in their yard or had smaller yards and they still wanted to have fruit trees, we looked at, well, how can we put a multiple fruit trees, which would help cross-pollinate, 
in a smaller space. And two ways we're going about this is one we call hat trick and one we call triple play. And with triple play is we take three different apple trees and put them in the same container. So you have three separate trees growing in there. And they will grow together um, in that fashion and pollinate each other, um, produce fruit in a much smaller space. Um, turned out very, very successful in doing that. That's yeah, a top seller for us here at the Garden Center. Yeah. So here at Water, he, and, and they perform really well. The beauty is one variety will ripen and then the next variety it, it ripens in a sequence. Uh, right. uh, so you're not bombarded by 20 bushels of apples. Right. You can get this bushel and that bushel and mm -hmm. this bushel. Right. It takes the pressure off of processing that many apples. Sure, sure it does. And so that's, uh, that helps out a lot with, with everybody. And you could, at some point in time, they're all harvesting at the same time. Yeah. So you can go pick. Yeah. If you wanted this, you know, a Cortland apple versus a Honeycrisp, you could go and just grab the one you wanted. So what, do you have a favorite apple that you like personally? Um, the, the one I probably like the most is a Jonathan. Okay. Yeah. That's um, interesting. It's a cooking apple, but it's also a, you could use it as an eating apple. It's a little bit more tart, but it's a, a definitely a very tasty. So apple. you like tart fruits. Yes, I do. I like more. Gala myself. Yeah, okay. It's melting your mouth. <laughs> makes the best leathers. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Best, mm -hmm. uh, apple jams and butters. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My mouth's watering just thinking about it. It's just such a good one. Yeah. And it can be an eating apple too. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, the other one we do is the um, uh, hat trick, and that's where you have a tr uh, an apple tree um, that is grown up as a single trunk, and then maybe two feet up off the ground, we'll graft on a Honeycrisp apple, and then we'll go up another foot, and we'll graft a Cortland apple, and maybe then another foot, and we'll put on another apple. So you have anywhere from three to four different apples at different heights on the tree. And they have to be espaliered, so they'll have to stay on that in order to stand up and be good. But then again, it's for a small space. You get multiple apples, and they kind of come on at different times of the year, uh, but they self-pollinate each other still. So now describe espalier. So some listeners okay. may know what that is, some may not. Okay. Then how do you design or, or plant that into your landscape? Um, okay, well, what it is, espaliate, is you have a trellis that the plant is growing on. Yeah. And so it, it's a wooden trellis in most cases that helps support the tree. So when you get it in the container, which would come from you, um, it already has a small espaliate uh, trellis on it. Uh, as the tree grows, you will probably have to gr increase the size of that so that it's a little more st sturdy and hold the plant up. But you would plant the whole thing together as one unit when you'd put it in the ground. Gotcha. I think of it as two dimensional, so it's it's like a it's like a wall. <clears throat> yes. A trellis. Mm -hmm. And so, it's you could put it next to a patio. Right. Block the wind, mm -hmm. get the shade, and yet you can have fruits on, on it. it. It's very pretty. They have yeah. the fruit trees, yeah. the apples dangling mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. And so I find eventually they hold the fence up. Right. You put them down fence lines. Sure. Uh, that's kind of how you use that mm -hmm. now, on the outer edge of gardens, flower gardens or right. vegetable gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of grapes, you're doing espaliered right. apples. apples. Right. Yeah. Right. So it has many uses uh, in that form that you could get it into a, a landscape and, and having it on a patio. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. But in a pot. A, just because it's a smaller. Patio, that is a great yeah. way yeah. of doing it. I've got a peach, a big peach. It's got to have a trunk on it. It's got to be six inches mm. circumference. Mm -hmm. Produces every year, yep. and it shades the hot tub on okay. the patio. And so I just cut it back. I don't mm -hmm. let it get too big. Mm -hmm. Every summer, I just cut it back. Right, makes it looks beautiful. Beautiful. Right. beautiful. So, what other garden tips can you give from Bailey's your garden perspective that listeners would uh, could take away? Um, well, to you know, take a when you go out to to garden or, or set up a, a flower bed or a garden, just. Make sure you look at the space you have <clears throat> so you know what size plants to go get. And don't look at the plant that you buy in the store, but look on the tag and see yeah. how big that plant's going to get right. so that you don't overcrowd and just create a 
something that more works. maintenance than you, more, than more you maintenance. need. Yeah. yeah. And it just won't look good down the road. So always really get a good idea for the space you're going to plant. We are starting to bring in more of your smaller trees. That is mm. like a street tree or in between the property lines mm -hmm. kind of tree. Mm -hmm. So right. real narrow birches, uh, narrow, the, your uh, Merlot, yeah. red buds, uh, smaller yeah. trees right. that will not overtake their space right. and easy to plant, easy to maintain. Yeah. Right. Yeah, with every, you know, home spaces have become much smaller. Yeah. And so to try and get a variety in those home spaces, we've had to come up with plants that are more upright than they are spreading. And those, those you know, the Parkland Pillar Birch is a very good example of that. Um, the uh, Gladiator Crab Apple, a good example of that. All of those fit those bills and create some good character for yeah. your yard. And that birch, was that, what was that the one again? Parkland Pillar. Parkland Pillar. Mm-hmm. Bright white bark, yep. tight. I mean, yep. maybe six feet wide, something like that. Well, five, five, four, five, to, four to four five, five foot wide. Yeah, and then it grows maybe 10, 20, 15, 20 foot tall. Twenty foot tall. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, and you don't have to do any pruning or any help, any keep up on it. It just grows in that fashion on its own. Yeah, just leave it alone, and boom, it goes to town. Yeah, no maintenance. Uh, aspen would be comparable <clears> to aspen. <throat> But aspens, they're going to sucker. Right. They're going to come up. They're going to yeah. be more maintenance. Yeah, you don't have any suckering with this at all. Yeah. Um, what you buy is a young tree. It doesn't have white bark yet, but it, in a couple of years, the bark will turn white, and you'll be good. Gosh, that's, a, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome new trees, shrubs mm. coming out from Bailey Nursery. Yep. Appreciate you being here. Hey. This is really great. You make us smarter. You, and thanks for taking <laughs> the time to yeah. talk to listeners. This is well, super. So this is no problem. The Thank inside scoop. Yes, so. there we go. All right, Steve Carlson with Bailey Nurseries. He's the rep for Utah and Arizona. Did I get that right? Or uh, Arizona, Colorado? New Mexico, Colorado. The Southwest. The Southwest, So basically. there we go. Here at Waters Garden Center. Be right back. Don't change that dial. Be right back after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Purple Plum, and our White Night Candy Tuft. Masses of fragrant white flowers cover mounds of perennial green foliage. Extreme heat and cold tolerance, this award winner repeatedly blooms without deadheading for super easy care. Butterflies, bees, hummingbirds are going to love your backyard again. White Night Candy Tuck can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters companion plants for April are Purple Twist Plums, Perfume Lilacs, Columbine, and Arizona Gallardia. Gallardia is the perfect mountain perennial with huge fiery flowers on a compact plant. She loves the heat and super drought hardy. You can count on this bloomer to show off all summer long in raised beds, containers, or in the garden. Havelina and rabbit proof. This bloomer is a must-have Arizona plant. Arizona Gallardia, found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So if you want a really fun, I mean, really fun garden class next Friday, we're offering a free garden class. It's at three o'clock in the afternoon on Friday and it's uh, lilacs. What are the best varieties of lilacs and other blooming plants of spring? So fragrance. So they're just starting my lilacs. I, I grow white ones myself. I love the white. I love the fragrance. I think they've got a deeper, richer, sweeter smell to them. And that entire part of the landscape is filled with this lilac fragrance. Of course, the most common, common lilac, that's the one your grandparents grew for, for many years. But there's so many more choices. New dwarf varieties. We'll go over all of that. But come, come. If you want to know about lilacs, you're in lilac country. This is where they adapt really well. Uh, they're drought hardy. They're minimal care. They don't take a lot of pruning. They don't take a lot of water. You fertilize them every once in a while and they just go crazy. So they're just really adaptive. We just had a butterfly bush show up this week. We've had uh, spireas, barberries. You can go on and on. There's so many and we'll go over all of those. This last Friday, it was peonies. It's time to put peonies in the ground. So we just went over. Here's the peonies. Here's, here's what we do. Here's how you plant them. Next week, that's the 15th. 
We've got herbs and vegetables. So we are harvesting. We've, we started late last year a whole series of herbs and vegetables, and they're starting to show up now. Big tomatoes. I was showing off one at the uh, Chamber of Commerce networking event on, when was it? Wednesday. And uh, showed off this beautiful black crim uh, tomato. Black crim is an heirloom. It's an old-fashioned. It's so red that it starts to turn black and it just melts in your mouth. Oh my goodness. It's a good producer here for the mountains. Got a great, great first crop just came in. We'll crescendo. It'll, it'll get more and more and more as we prepare for that April 15th vegetable class, herbal class. Uh, herbs grow amazingly well here. And so that that's just, it's, it's every Friday at three o'clock at this point through April, we've got a, a garden class there to help you be a better gardener. The last one in April is new flower introductions for 2002. There's some new colors coming out and we want to show those off. It's just something you'll only find because we've grown them for us here at Waters. You get to see the latest, greatest, newest, funnest. If you're bored with gardening, come to that one. That'll be the 22nd of April. It's also time to start watering, turning those irrigation systems on. So as plants bloom, if that's your cue. So when the forsythia or in that bright yellow flower, the lilacs are in bloom, your flowering trees are in bloom, you go, okay, now it's time to turn the irrigation on. That typically happens the first week in April. And so we're right on track. So you want to activate those, those irrigation clocks you want to water a long time, but infrequently. So a drip system, I'm talking about mostly those irrigation clocks of the drip system. You want to water for probably an hour and a half, two hours for trees and shrubs. They got roots that go down two, three feet. It takes a while to push that water down through the entire root zone. And then you want to only do that maybe once a week for established plants, no more than twice, even a brand new rose. Twice a week's good, a deep soak. So that's the secret. We've got a, I've got a water guide here. If, you're, if, the, if you want more on that, come talk to us. We've got a free water guide. Whenever you buy a plant from us, you get how to plant, how to water. Here's how you care for it. We want to make sure you've got more information than you need to be successful. That's kind of our, that's our claim to fame here at Waters Garden Center. Most of your independents, their plants are higher quality. They truly are. They're, they're, they're cared for. We never allow them to get stressed. Then we give the, the information to be successful in your yard. So we're here to help. So Ken and Lisa Lane, we're here every week, virtually every day. Some family members here at Waters Garden Center. And we love talking to fans of the show. You can grow your own vitamins. We can show you how to grow your own vegetables and herbs for a healthier you. Waters plants are entirely organic, with plant genetics never altered and non-GMO. Natural vitamins straight from the garden, with naturally healthier herbs and vegetables. Healthier plants for a healthier you, with plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.